Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to attempt to do Metasploit. Now I've messed with Metasploit before many times in the past, but I never really like actually like got a full like course with it. So this time, instead of just jumping into a machine and trying to do it, I'm just gonna actually um, hey learn Metasploit. So let's start. Let's get started. Metasploit is an open source pen testing framework and a powerful tool utilized by security engineers around the world. Maintained by Rapid7, Metasploit is a collection of not only thoroughly tested exploits, but also <clears throat> auxiliary and post exploitation tools. Throughout this room, we will explore the basics of using this massive framework and a few of the modules it includes. Here's a link to the companion video for this room in case you're stuck. The virtual machine used in this room, ICE, a worksheet version of this room, and a subsequent answer key can be downloaded for offline usage. Kali and most other security distributions of Linux include Metasploit by default. If you're using a different distribution of Linux, verify that you have it installed or install it from the Rapid7 GitHub repository. So, that is complete. So let's move on to initializing. If this is your first time using Metasploit, you'll have a f so just a few things to do before you utilize its full functionality. Let's go ahead and get everything started. First things first, we need to initialize the database. Let's do that now with the command msfdb in it. If you're using the attack box, you don't need to do this. So no needed. <coughs> Before starting Metasploit, we can view some of the advanced options we can trigger for starting the console. Check these out by using the command msf console dash h. Try this again, shall we? Okay, so, so that though, I guess gotta be a little bit patient. So now that works. You can start the Metasploit console on the command line using uh, command line without showing the banner or any startup information as well. What switch do we add to the MSF console to start it with showing this information? This will include the happy face. So I believe it'll be So we MS database initiate. Once the database is initialized, go ahead and start Metasploit via the command MSS console. After the Metasploit has started, let's go ahead and check that we've connected to the database with this now with the command DB status. So we did DB status connected to MSF connection type post post GreSQL. 
עכשיו. Cool. We can update the database. Which type of database does Metasploit 5 use? All right, got him. Let's stop here. You can start the console and the command line without showing the banner and his data information as well. What switch do we add to the console to start it? I'm showing this information. Well, it just answered it. Cool, look at the database. Which type of database does Metasploit 5 use? It's using PostgreSQL. All right, rocking to the core. So, Using the help menu, let's learn the base commands and module categories of Metasploit. Nearly all the answers to the following questions can be found in the Metasploit help menu. Let's go ahead and start exploring the help menu. On the Metasploit prompt, where we'll be at after we start Metasploit using MS Console, type the command help. Okay. Continue again. Type in help. As you can see, got a nice list of commands there from the banner, all the way to jobs. The help ID has a very short one character alias. What is it? I think it's this. Question mark. Find the various modules we have we have at our disposal within Metasploit. It's one of the most common commands we will leverage in the framework. What is the base command we use for searching? Search. Well, I'm not searching for anything, but I think that is the correct answer. Everyone's probably wondering, why am I going through this? I'm going through right now, if you guys, anybody remembers, my battle plan for OSCP. Anybody might remember my battle plan I had on another video, and I'll link that to it. But yes, I'm starting off with the Windows Fundamentals, Active Directory Fundamentals, Kerberos, um, Post Exploitation Basics, Wet, Windows Privilege Escalation and Shells, Eternal Blue, and Metasploit. Right now I'm doing Metasploit because it's been a long day. Um, I'm not going to have as much time as I want to do tonight, but I believe I can get the Metasploit video done before I, you know, go to bed. So, without further ado, I will continue. And thank you for your patience. So once we found the module we want to leverage, what command we use to select it as an active module? Yeah, you use use. I'm pretty sure you don't, I'm pretty sure that's what you do. How about if we want to view information about either a specific module or just the active one we have selected? Use do info. Remember a little bit vaguely from when I did the uh, gpen. So. Metasploit has a built-in netcat-like function where we can make a quick connection with the host simply to verify that we can talk to it. What is the command? Hmm. 
né? Entirely, one of the commands purely utilized for fun. What command displays the modded asynchrony art we see when we start MSF console without QFOD? I believe that's one I saw earlier when we were looking at the help, which was banner. So we'll revisit these two commands shortly. However, they're two of the most used commands within Metasploit. First, what command do we use to change the value of the port of a variable? Set. I believe it's set. So Metasploit supports the use of global variables, something which is incredibly useful when you're specif specifically focusing on a single box. What command changes the value of a variable globally? Uh, set G, but let's take a look. Sets a global variable to the variable. So set G. Set G. Now that we've learned how to change the value of variables, how do we view them? There are technically several answers to this question. However, I'm looking for a specific three letter command which is used to view the value of a single variable. get how about changing the value of a variable to null or no value I think unset is the answer we're looking for When performing a penetration test, it's quite common to record your screen either for further review or for providing evidence of any actions taken. This is often coupled with the collection of a console output to a file as it can be incredibly useful to grep for different pieces of information output to the screen. What command can we use to set our console output to save a file? Write console output into a file as well as the screen. Spool. Leaving a Metasploit console running isn't always convenient. It can be helpful to have all of our previously set values load when starting up Metasploit. What command can we use to store the settings active data stores from Metasploit to a settings file? This will save within your MSF4 or MSF5 directory and can be done can be undone easily by simply removing the created settings file I will leave save is what we're looking for Modules for every occasion. Metasploit consists of six modules that make up the bulk of the tools you will utilize within it. Let's take a quick look through the various modules, their purposes, and some of the commands associated with modules.
the nice little picture there. There's I am also doing a written right up here as well. Okay, so now this diagram includes both the interfaces and most of the modules. This diagram does not include the post module. Okay, so easily the most common module utilized, which module holds all the exploit code we will we will use. So easily the most common module I utilize. Oh, obviously the exploit. Also, guys, if you didn't know this with Metasploit. You don't always have to use type in the word exploit. You could also type in the word run, and it will run or execute uh, the module inside Metasploit. I learned that from uh, the Cyber Mentor, so that actually helps a lot. So, but still, if you didn't know it, you know it now. Used hand in hand with exploits, which module contains the various bits of the shell code? We send to have executed the following exploitation. Well, top of my head, that's payload. Which module is most commonly used in scanning and verification machines are exploitable? This is not the same as the actual exploitation course. I know and remember that being auxiliary. A lot of what we're going through, some of this I've done before, but it's a refresher course because I really want to build my foundations. Because then after this, it's just going to be me going after all out on machines. Uh, one of the most common activities after exploitation is looting and pivoting. Which module provides these, cap these capabilities? I believe that's a post module. Yay! I see improvement. Commonly utilized in payload obfuscation, which module allows us to modify the appearance of our exploit such that we may avoid signature detection? Remember from GPEN, it is encoder. Last but not least, which module is used with the buffer overflow and ROP? Well, that is not. I know that because my mind is still fresh with buffer overflow stuff on top of your race. There's room. Not every module is loaded in by default. What command can we use to load the mod the different modules? Command command. There we go. So Move that shell. <laughs> Remember that database we set up? In this step, we're going to take a look at what we can use it for and exploit our victim while we're at it. As you might have noticed, up until now, this point, we haven't touched in that in this room, let alone before much recon on this virtual machine. It's all about the change. Now we'll take a swing at using nmap within Metasploit. Go ahead and deploy the box now. It may take us a few minutes delay for starting up the target vulnerable service. No, Metasploit does does not support, or pardon me. No, Metasploit does support different types of port scans from within the module, within the auxiliary modules. Metasploit can also import other scans from nmap and Nessus, just to name a few. So we'll hit deploy. Metasploit comes with a built-in way to run and map and feeds its results directly into our database. Let's run that now using command db and map. Let's see. Server version. 
So there's one. So obviously this is a Linux box. So I'm just going to use a database and map. Service version. Oh, yeah, it's not going to catch anything. Now it'll hopefully catch something. Still kind of waiting. So, returned a few things. So the ports we see, 135, 139, 4445. Uh, so you can see remote desktop, a few other things. So what service does MAP identify running on port 135? Well, we go back and take a look. We know for a fact it's running MSRPC. Let's go ahead and see what information we collect in the database try type of the command hosts. The information in the in the console now. So we can hit enter. I mean yeah, hit enter, hit host. And it tells us what device we have and the OS name is it's unknown. 
about something else from the database try now services. So we're gonna type David. So we're gonna type in services. So it gives us the name of the services now that we know what we're working with. One last thing, try the command vuln is now. This won't show much at the current moment. However, it's worth noting that Metasploit will keep track of discovery vulnerabilities. One way, one of the ways the database can be leveraged quickly and powerfully. So vulnerabilities, timestamp, post name, references. Now that we've scanned our victim system, let's try connecting to it with the Metasploit payload. First, we'll have to search for the target payload in Metasploit 5, their most recent version time of writing we can simply type use followed by a unique string found within the target exploit for example try this out now with the following command icecast what is the full path for our exploit that now appears on the MS console point prompt this will include the exploit section at the start So we're going to try exploit, windows, Well, that use command with the unique string can be incredibly useful. That's not quite the exploit we want here. Let's now run the command search multi-header. Gotta wait a little bit now since I apparently exited out of there. That's why I didn't work. I had header, not handler. That was when you're sleepy. So it's going to ask, what is the name of the column on the far left side of the console that shows up next to name? OK. 
go ahead and run the command use number text to export handle multi handle would be like a six so guys if you're not I also learned this from Cyber Mentor. I gotta give him props. You don't always have to type in exploit multi handler. You could just type in use six. Next, right, so let's set the payload using the set payload meta uh, set payload Windows metaterpreter. This is actually good practice, guys. I'm really tired, <laughs> and I'm about to really go in still with what's left of Metasploit. Whoa! Next, let's set the payload using this command, set payload windows, metaterpreter, reverse TCP. And this way we can modify which payloads we want to use or exports additionally. Let's run this command. Set localhost, your IP, and drag me. You might have to check your IP address and run the command and make sure you do that now. You will likely be shown over here. So we use ice gas. One last step before we can go on our exploit, run the command.
See guys, that lets you go to know how tired I really am. Because I first did the remote for the local. <laughs> yeah, it just goes to show I'm really tired, but this is good practice though too. Once you set those variables correctly. Run the exploit now via either the command exploit or run the command IJ, which is to run this as a job. Once we started this, we can check all the jobs. Just run the command system by running the command jobs. So there are currently no active jobs. After we've established our connection in the, la in the next task, we can list all of our sessions using the command sessions. So we can interact with our target sessions using the command sessions. Tech I session number. Huh. Hmm. What did I not do? Let's get lost in a little bit here. Hooker house for the job, if I right? That's good. What did I do wrong? I want to push on through, guys. I'm not stopping.
<clears throat> Somewhere I lost the Start over, shall we? Bridge eyes cast. Use Z. Okay, start all over again. That's fine. Hopefully this should work this time. I'm going to push on through, guys, because I can do it. We use multi handler like we did before.
So now I'm here. Let's try. There we go. That's what I didn't do right before. And then it's jobs. Now that we got a shell for the victim, let's take a look at several post exploitation options we can have with the actual questions in the following section. Can be answered by using the multiple help menu, which can be accessed through the help command. This menu dynamically expands the load modules. First things first, our initial shell process typically isn't very stable. Let's go ahead and attempt to move to a different process first. Let's host process using the command ps, which is the name of the spool service.
거죠. 자, 자. Let's go ahead and move into the spool process at least. Attempt to what command do we use to transfer ourselves into the process? This won't work at the current time as we don't have sufficient time. So you can do this and try. Oh yeah, that answer I forgot is good old Mike. Well, that migration didn't work. Let's find out some more information about the system so we can try to elevate. What command can we run to find out more information regarding the current user running the process we are in? Of course, I had to run it anyway. Now that we know the migrate doesn't work. I think it's Siphon, Sisson, no. Get UID is what I think we're looking for. I got more information about system itself. Oh yeah, sysinfo. Let's take a little bit of Googling. What do we run to load Mimi cats more specifically the new version? I guess so we can use it. Well, from what I remember, I'm going to pull out my old G-Pen book here, and it says, as an old, I mean recent release of 2020. Let's go ahead and figure out the privileges of our current user. What command do we run? What command do we run to transfer files to our built-in computer? Upload. Stupid question, stupid question. So what command do we run to figure out the network information? No. That's very no brainer. Let's go ahead and run a key plus migration. Not a split. First, let's run the command run post news slash GPVM. 
this will determine if we're actually interviewing. So we are on a VM. Now let's try run post exploit suggester. This will check for various exploits which we can run within our session to elevate privileges. Feel free to experiment using these suggestions, however. We'll be going through this in greater detail in the room. As you can see, this is uh, still getting exploit suggestions, so I'll wait a little bit here. Hmm. That's it. So let's run this one. So you can't run it. One quick question, what command can we run in a medical position to spawn a normal shell? Shit. Last but certainly not least, let's take a look at the auto routing options available to us in Metasploit. While our vector machine may not have multiple network interfaces, We'll walk through the motions of pivoting through our victim as if it did have access to extra networks. Let's go ahead and run the command run. So pull up the help menu. What command do we run to add a route to the following subnet? So we can start SACS for a proxy server out of the session. Background our current meta background our current meta 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 interpreter session and run the command search server SOX for A. What is the full path of a SOX for A to log in?
All right, guys, you can see we completed this. Thank you very much, guys. Please like, subscribe to the video. Have a good night.